loud or too low, let me know. Um, well, Sharon has um, elected me to do most of the speaking, <laughs> which is fine because I talk a lot, um, and Susie and Eric would have my back on that. <laughs> but we should probably introduce ourselves uh, quickly. I am an assistant principal at the high school. I help coordinate STEM. This is my 12th year for the MSC of Martinsville. I have a prior um, background in healthcare, and so for 11 years I've taught in life sciences, primarily in advanced life sciences. Sharon? And I'm Sharon Gooden. I have been with the MSC of Martinsville for almost 20 years um, in various roles. Um, I've been a special ed teacher, a fourth grade teacher, now I'm a STEM coordinator, STEM coach at Brooklyn STEM Academy. Um, I'm very fortunate to have all three of my children go through the MSC of Martinsville, and I absolutely love it. Okay, let's see if I hit the right button. Oh my goodness. So, um, in 2021, the MSC of Martinsville kind of enhanced its approach to our STEM curriculum and what we were doing with STEM from grades 12 all the way down to K. And this is pretty much why. So this is a direct quote from the IDOE. And I just want to highlight a couple of words here or phrases. One, that all students can contribute to society. And that the next generation, we want to create that next gen for thinkers, creators, advocates, and entrepreneurs. And I feel that like that aligns very closely with what we want as a chamber, both at the local level and at the state level. Last night I presented at the school board meeting, uh, one of our students received a commendation from, it's a national scholarship program associated with the PSAT and the SAT. And in that commendation, that committee directly referred to our kids as national resources. And that kind of sat with me a little bit last night. And then on the way to work today, I was like thinking about this presentation, how do I not talk about education too much and curriculum and use too many words that only make sense to people who are in education all the time. And it really did kind of hit home. We're in the business of kids and all these kids are national resources. They are what's fueling us. They're, they're what we're using as our fuel for the future. And we're all invested in that. So when we look at STEM, I don't want to read this slide for you, but I have a few things that catch my eye a little more quickly than others. One, those words problem solving, creativity, and technological expertise. That makes pretty good sense. Interdisciplinary thinking. How do I apply information from multiple pools that on the surface don't seem terribly to overlap, but really when we're underneath, they do. And then, have we heard of design thinking? I bet a lot of people in this room have heard of the concept of design thinking. And I really feel like a, a solid STEM curriculum supports all of these things. And of course, we get all of these great things like research and development and being globally competitive um, and then fostering sustainability because our resources are limited. They're great. This is pulled directly from the Indiana Chamber's website, as well as the Martinsville Chamber. The Indiana will be a global leader in innovation and give a, a forge economic opportunity where all of our enterprises and systems, citizens can prosper. Straight from the Indiana uh, website, the Indiana Chamber website. And that's what we're saying STEM does, because that's what the evidence tells us, that when we have a comprehensive STEM education in our schools, our kids will just be better. And then specifically from the Martinsville Chamber website, economic progress and innovation. So when I hear every place that you represent, where your niche market is, and then when I think about what our goals are at, from the IDOE, and then our individual goal, goals as a, an individual like a person, or a corporation, or a small business, we all really want the same thing, opportunity resources to achieve that opportunity. How do we get there? And STEM really does help us get there uh, very nicely. This is a lot of words. What I want to talk to you with regard to targeted career clusters, without getting too much into the weeds. The state of Indiana has identified areas and they, they give flames, they, they give them a, a fire. And five flames is the hottest job market that Indiana has. This is where we 
need more people. This is where we have massive opportunity for jobs for our kids and for us, for all of us, in case we wanted to try something else. So we're looking at comp sci. And when we're talking comp sci, this is coding, programming, any kind of IT, gaming actually helps kids learn a lot about how to manage systems. And then cybersecurity, increasingly uh, an important issue for us. Anything associated with engineering, how, how machines work, how we use materials, how we build structures, how do we, uh, how do those things move? What's the iterative process like? Design, improve, redesign, keep going. Uh, we get into robotics. I'm very excited about what's happening in robotics in our district. I'm excited about all of it, um, but we've got some really amazing things happening in robotics that aren't happening in other places. And this is, uh, please note with our robotics, and I'll talk about this more in a moment, anything associated with electrical, ACDC, um, pneumatics, hydraulics, we have new scalable training for all of those things. And of course, medicine, anything medical. Anything medical tech. These are all four or five flame job areas in the state of Indiana. And we have vertically aligned from 12th grade all the way down to kindergarten in every single one of these areas. And we've done it in two years. It's amazing. So what was kind of our thrust to do that? Um, in 2021, the state of Indiana issued a new STEM, this is pretty big paper, basically their vision. And in this vision, what they wanted, ooh, I don't want to get They wanted our kids to have to solve hundreds of challenges across the lifetime of their tenure in schools. So for 13 years in a row, they wanted kids solving hundreds of challenges. They wanted us to move beyond an industrial model of learning. Industrial model would be roads, I take the notes, I write the material down, I take the test. Now there's a place for that. I have taught that way, some classes are still taught that way, but not all classes are taught that way. Because life is just a little bit different now. And we need our kids to be able to think beyond memorization. We must move them into application, design, and redesign. Oh, and then all of those things like collaborating with peers, communicating effectively, all of those, C, those big C words that are really important to us. So we have a mission in our district. We want all of our schools to prepare every single student, in the event that they're interested, for a career in a STEM pathway from 12 down to K. We're not leaving any kid or any grade behind if they're interested. Oops, no, you're fine. Go. So that's where I step in. I love what I do. I'm very fortunate to see every single student, kindergarten through fourth grade at the Innovation Center, and we're gonna go into that in a little bit. But she hit on a point that I really wanna bring home. When the kids come in, I tell them that they can change the world. In kindergarten, you can do something today that will change the world. And getting to hear that, and coming back and hearing it more and more and more. The idea is to have that seed at a small little growth, and then by the time they get to high school, it's going like gangbusters. It is amazing to see these kids get so excited and use vocabulary that they didn't get to sit down and write notes about. They're using vocabulary about like lift and thrust and um, drag, and they really understand what this means. How to third grade level. By the time they get on and with every step along the way, it is amazing to me to see these kids grow and like, oh yeah, we did this. And the excitement, that's what's really awesome. I love that. And they do understand lift and thrust at the third grade level. And they can apply it and they can modify their designs. Absolutely. So last night when I was thinking about this, another thing I thought was when talking about how great we are, we were pretty good before we started in 2021 working on what we were doing with STEM. So I'm gonna step over for just a quick second. These words are tiny because we have so many options. These 
Each of these boxes represents what's called a graduation pathway at Martinsville High School. And there are numbers next to them because that means there, that's how many uh, pathways fall under that cluster of title. So for advanced manufacturing, we actually have three pathways that fit under the massive title advanced manufacturing. I would have to do the math again, but I think that's about 34. We manage approximately three-fourths of these in-house. The remainder of these students travel to Hoosier Hills for these pathways, but we, we manage three-fourths approximately in-house. For comparison, a neighboring school manages eight, and the remainder of their graduation pathways go to career centers. So we're managing quite a bit from a pathway standpoint. So and this is in 2021. This is 2021. Now in 2021, what each line represents is how that particular school was supporting a graduation pathway as identified by the state of Indiana. When most of us went to school, we didn't have to have a graduation pathway. Kids have to now, no choice. So if it's a career related pathway, they have to take at least six classes associated with that pathway. Uh, another pathway is academic, which basically you're just meeting all of the academic honors requirements. <coughs> this is how we supported every single pathway in 2021. And that's what we do now. And we actually met this goal last year. two years and this year we're just making it better more of it so we had it we had met the goal by 2022 2023 school year and now we've increased many of these by another 50 to 80 percent of exposure in the classroom I just love it this is my favorite graphic ever it's just my favorite <clears throat> uh, to go from this to this in two years is almost unheard of in any system, let alone a large system, an entire school district. We do have a STEM academy, but now every single student in every single elementary is receiving immersive, embedded STEM in the areas, the general areas of engineering, computer <coughs> science, biomedical technology, and robotics. I, I, I just every time I think about when I think about what we've done in two years, it's it's just a massive, a massive change. Are you talking about how many bucks there? Sharon, do you want to talk about our field trips? The sure. Field trips? Sure. Uh, the immersion experiences. So at Brooklyn STEM Academy, we have the Innovation Center, which is a beautiful building. They have two huge. Uh, and they're about a little bit less than this. Each each lab is about this size, and this echoey, which is run fun with a bunch of kids. Um, each grade level gets to come out for a two-day experience. So the project, we do a project lead the way experience with them, which is a curriculum-based program. The teachers at their school start it off and then I go in and I teach it with them, with the teachers to have them a full-fledged three and a half hours a day doing activities, hands-on moving around they i mean just because i fit, i just finished the third grade i know the science of flight um we did propellers we talked about propellers we talked about lift like we said earlier they created gliders and they flew gliders across we had binder clips they did a um, program that had uh, um, supplies to a a resort or a remote area where they put binder clips on there we had kids with 20 binder clips on a paper airplane going 10 feet. They flew it 10 feet, which is amazing. Amazing. Um, they start at kindergarten and they come up to fourth grade. Uh, we have the field trips from the district. They bus everybody out and we have lunch out there served. It's just part of their curriculum now and it's awesome. And we, we met that last year, and then this year we have additional STEM units that are embedded in the science, uh, in all, all science classrooms, K through four. My best part about this whole thing is my heart is with um, mild intervention, special ed. And this year, 
On Monday, we're starting our applied skills to come out, which is huge. It's a huge accomplishment because these applied skills, they learn at a different rate. So we are looking at how having them come out and have that experience with them, which I'm so excited about. I'm, I'm really pumped about that. I was thinking about that today and STEM learning versus old school traditional learning. I was really great with that old school model of taking tests. I test well, it's something I'm comfortable with. What I was thinking about today is an, a project and an assignment I had last year for my AP Bio kids. The kids that struggled the most, right now, just right now, with that super high STEM approach with really complex content are actually your highest achieving students. So what happens with a STEM approach to learning, everybody gets better at everything. And there's, there's such a natural differentiation built <coughs> in to what you, how you can show your capabilities and strengths. I see growth faster in kids when I apply STEM <coughs> principles instead of traditional principles. Traditional principles are good, so let's still use that. But I see kids go farther faster with STEM. Sheena hit on something earlier about the collaboration, cooperation, um, communication. In, if you know anything right now, if you have children of any elementary school age, they want to talk all the time. And it's their, they are the world's best person at doing this. But this is really awesome because you have students that are talkers and you have students that aren't talkers and those students, like she was saying, those students that sit back normally are the ones who push the limits now. We had a student um, from South who typically, I mean, she's in a wheelchair. She doesn't get to do, a, she doesn't <coughs> stand, she, I don't want to say she doesn't get to. She doesn't want to put her stuff out there. Her, I, I, I loved it. I even sent her parents a text. I'm like, her <coughs> um, glider went the furthest distance with the most boxes on it. She did it, and she was so proud of herself because she didn't give up. She made it happen. Nobody helped, I mean, her partner helped her, but no adult helped her. And with this approach, <coughs> that's the biggest thing. Teachers put their hands behind their back and say, it's okay to fail. When you fail, you succeed. You fail first, um, an engineer told me one time, you fail fast. You want to fail fast. You want to get it and go on and figure out what's wrong and go forward. And that's I love it. I mean, I get so excited when I get the kids out. <coughs> if I can uh, draw your attention to something, I can't remember what the next slide is. Um, if you'll look at this advanced manufacturing box up here. I know that that doesn't look like advanced manufacturing <coughs> to you, but that's what that box represents. This is automation and robotics. And you'll notice that previously we did not have anything feeding into automation and robotics. And now we do. And the reason I bring that up every school, in fact, is feeding into this and we're currently working on our ordering for robot arms so that all K-4 students will have access to robot arms, a uh, specific unit at Bell, and then we're also putting robotic arms in the comp sci class. Ooh, I have to, I'll go ahead and I'll go back. The reason I point that out, um, we recently have renovated, uh, reinvigorated our advanced manufacturing at the high school and we're offering a new and improved graduation pathway in automation and robotics. And yesterday we started receiving our first shipment of materials. And um, please, uh, if you are available December 6th from five to seven, we should have it all set up and ready to go. Our kids are, learn this, are learning high tech, pneumatics, hydraulics, electrical relay, AC, DC relay, um, skill boss, sets us up for certifications, particularly in management of robotic arms. And that is a Pegasus robot. Robot's coming next week. That's a Cobot. We've already got that one. I think it's called a Dubot. Um, pick and place. We will have, they have a whole Megatronics line now. So students are, will have firsthand knowledge. These are all scalable. Normally a training system like this would cost about $3 million. Uh, Amatrol is a company through ADEX. They have figured out how to make this scalable so we can put it in kids' classrooms and they learn how to do the highest tech stuff.
stuff and we can afford to teach it to them. Just quickly, some changes we've made. Every elementary now has immersive STEM, immersive computer science and after school robotics. We just received a notification of another $46,000 grant to fund robotics K through 12. Uh, Bell, we now have immersive STEM, an additional STEM elective, immersive computer science, immersive robotics, every kid's getting robotics at Bell and after school robotics. And at Wooden, we now have immersive STEM, STEM electives, comp sci electives and after school robotics. We've covered it everywhere. I threw this in just because um, another thing Sharon and I do is we hunt money <laughs> because I like to spend it a whole lot. Um, we have funded most of these projects with dollars that were not associated with COVID money and they did not come out of the general fund. Um, so the first student allotment and um, <coughs> Two STEM integration grants, education, education readiness. Um, this is actually the Connexus grant. Um, Catalyst for computer science. Project Lead the Way Training, Code.org, Donors Choose, 3M, and then the HHC, HHSC, sorry, Endress Computer Science. And we and I don't have the robotics because we were just we just found out we were fully funded on that one. This is almost four hundred thousand dollars of curriculum and training we have put in our schools that has not come out of the per student allotment, which is really a big deal. And um, that's pretty much our presentation in a nutshell, taking a little bit of your time. Um, any questions or? So December 6th at Martinsville High School from 5 to 7, we are having an open house that will highlight pretty much if we teach it in industrial technology. So that's going to be what you think of in your as your vocational or your skilled trades wing at the high school. That's going to include our engineering, our new automation and robotics, computer science. It also includes some of our other graduation pathways, law enforcement. I believe we have, we have some individuals that represent different branches of the military. Okay. Open to the public. Can I just say how much I commend the school system for doing this? Um, kudos to you guys. Uh, I, a little backstory, I grew up in northern Indiana where everything is RV manufacturing, so it's very hands-on and you physically build it. And when I got into college and graduated, I went into my first job and it was shocking how much automation control is in manufacturing, is in really any place down here in, in South Central Indiana and, and all over the world. So the fact that these kids are getting this in high school and younger is just amazing because they're not going to get that shock you know, when they go out into the workforce. Um, so I, I commend the school system so much. Um, as, a, as a mom to a sixth grader too, it's, it's amazing to see what is happening in our schools. One thing, I forgot one little brag on us. Um, when I talked about the robotic arms that we're putting in places, this is so new, we can't even find vendors and curriculum. We're, yeah. We are figuring the vendor problem out. A lot of these arms are manufactured in China. The school cannot order from China, so I'm kind of stuck on Amazon. I just have to wait until things get restocked. That's where I can order from now, you can order from. And there isn't, uh, vertically aligned so there's no curriculum for K through 2 that says this is what you can use to help teach kids how to use a collaborative robot arm. So we are building that. Do you have a sense of where your, your graduates I mean, are ending up? I mean, with, with the, our, we have a state that's losing population, or at least not growing like the rest of the country. And uh, are these students typically staying here or are they seeking opportunities elsewhere? It's going to depend on the niche or the pathway. It does seem as if, unfortunately, a lot of times kids don't stay. But I am hopeful because this, I, my gut tells me the state of Indiana is really hungry to pursue this, to pursue this automation and robotics. And then there's something called Systems I-4-0 which is all collaborative, intuitive, very intelligent robotics. And I've, I've kind of got a 
back pocket idea on that. But I think the state is getting really hungry to try to pull that in. Um, the Conexus grant did not go to a lot of schools. I think, please don't quote me, I think we were one in eight in the state. Um, so right now for automation and robotics, our kids would be benefiting more in the sidebar areas uh, or outside of the periphery a little bit, but they still benefit. And I am just really hopeful that if we're hungry for automation and robotics, that our state leaders are gonna figure out how to get those things in our state, and then our kids are going to have exposure and experience that other places kids don't. And I know that we're not supposed to use hope as a strategy, but I believe, I believe that things can be better. With that being said, I, I get phone calls from other school systems a lot. I'm on the phone, I was on the phone with um, Bedford, a principal down in Bedford just the other day. Project Lead the Way loves what we're doing to get the whole, so Project Lead the Way has locked, it's the elementary is launched, and then it has Gateway, which is the middle school, and then it has high school, the core. So the Project Lead the Way, our person, our representative for this area, Project Lead the Way is a national program, and the, the person that's over our system here, she's giving what we have developed here in Morton County, Martinsville, Indiana, she's giving that look to everybody else and saying, hey, they're, they're working on it, they're getting this. We, I feel very comfortable. We might not be the only district in the state doing as much as we are. I can't say we're the only one, but we're close. People are reaching out to us and they're wanting to know what our model is, how we got there, how can you help me get my school into this model? School we spoke with um, a few months ago, they were working on just trying to get computer science taken care of. Just one career cluster. Um, I feel very confident about what we're doing. I feel very good about it. To answer some of your question, um, Indiana recently, within the last month, was just selected as a bio hub uh, for biotech. Um, and all of the surrounding uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, med tech, and biotechnology um, in the area recently got on board with that. So that aligns directly with what the state is doing. Um, so if you guys want to, I've got some information on that if you sure, want to download grant information. I figured that was coming based on how they're funding. And if you look at the language and the way yeah. people talk about things, like I, I know that there's stuff going on behind the scenes that yeah. I don't know about. And it's, it's phenomenal. Um, so Indiana's becoming that hub, specifically Central Indiana. Um, so the fact that this is aligning directly with that, that's going to inevitably, inevitably produce more kids going into those technologies within our state instead of leaving. Shannon, will you expand on the Pathways program? If I remember right, the class of 2022 was the first class, graduating class that had to have a pathway at my graduation. I will, I will do my very best. <laughs> a lot of people do not understand the requirements for graduation. So it used to be you took the classes you were supposed to take, you got your diploma, and everything was good. It is not like that anymore. Um, How many diplomas? I, at least five. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like 23. Like there's a lot of different options. So you still have to have so many math, sciences, language arts, like things like that. Um, but now you have to have your pathway classes, which is at least six. Um, unless you're academic honors, and now there's all different kinds of rules for academic honors, but then on top of that, they factor in your SAT scores. If, the, if, the, if we have issues with the SAT scores, um, sometimes we can use, okay, military, ASVAB, thank you. We can use ASVAB, we can use internships to help with that. I think that was, the first year was 2022. My son just graduated last year. So that is, Indiana, they want us doing this. They want kids taking classes that are directly related to some kind of career. Yeah. My understanding was basically they, they realized that kids were graduating, here's your diploma, and there was no direction of what was next. Correct. So this is to help bridge that. You're moving to adulthood, let's help give you guidance. So my son, for example, um, did an internship his second try of high school um, upon graduation, received a job offer, mm -hmm. and is now in his first year of an apprenticeship of a five-year apprenticeship program, paid internship, uh, paid, paid apprenticeship, and will, you know, five years be a journeyman. Um, and that is directly because of the, the internship that he received from Arnold High School. 
Correct. And so th that does happen for our kids. They do internships with us. Some of them figure out that what they thought they liked, they don't like. That usually saves you money if it was a college-related thing or if, uh, even a trade school-related thing. Those are expensive classes. So sometimes they go, they figure out they don't like things. Sometimes they go, they figure out they love it, and the people they're working with like them so much they give them a, they give them a job offer. That does happen.